All right, everybody. So I'm doing this video here because uh, I had some people to contact me before regarding this uh, Ethiopian eunuch. They were saying, well, if you could just believe what you read, why is it that the eunuch didn't understand what he was reading? All right. So I want to talk about that now because it's something that y'all may have missed. But let's talk about it because I want you to see when I say you can believe what you can read in the Bible, I want you to understand. But let's address this Ethiopian eunuch. Let's start with that story. So let's go to the book of Acts starting at verse 26 and let's get an understanding. All right. So the scripture says, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, arise and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Queen, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. All right. So we got this Ethiopian eunuch. He's coming unto Jerusalem to worship. All right. Now, verse 28, it says, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So we got this eunuch now. He's reading Isaiah the prophet. So he got the scriptures open. All right, let's keep going. So the scripture says, uh, verse 29, Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Now, this is what everybody, well, those people that contact me talking about. Action, Philip asking the eunuch, did he understand what he was reading? And he said, verse 31, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now, let's pause there. Now, understand this, that the Ethiopian eunuch, he said, well, he answered Philip. He said, how can I understand unless some man guide me? All right. So it's obvious that the eunuch didn't understand what he was reading. See, I'm making it. I'm making emphasis on the eunuch didn't understand what he was reading. Why am I making emphasis like that? Because the eunuchs didn't understand. <laughs> so the eunuchs didn't understand what he was reading. But that don't mean nobody else would understand. All right? So keep that in mind. The eunuchs didn't understand. That don't mean everybody else won't understand. But let's keep reading. Verse 32. So the place of the scripture where he read was this. Now let's look at what he was reading. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Now that comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7 and 8. Now let's go there. Let's go there because... I notice how Isaiah says he was led. But let's go to the way it's written at in scripture. So Isaiah chapter 53, it starts at verse 7. And it says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearer is dumb. So he opened out his mouth. Now, if you look before that, let's look at verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay, let's go up to 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let's go up to 4. And I'm doing this for a reason. You're going to see why. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Let's go up to three. 
He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was deprived, and we esteemed him not. Let's go up to two. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of out of dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Let's go up to one. Who had believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Okay, see, I did that for a purpose. Because before you started verse 7, which the, uh, the Eunice was reading, the scriptures before that don't even say the name of the person he was talking about. He just came and said, um, he was reading in a place where it said, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened out his mouth. So he didn't know who uh, Isaiah was talking about. Now, let's go back to Acts chapter eight. Now, let's go at, um, at verse 33. Now, remember, we read 32. The place of scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb done before his shearers, he, he opened out his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare the generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And that's at verse, thir that's at verse 8 of Isaiah 53. So, now look at this verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. See, he didn't know who Isaiah was talking about. He didn't know if Isaiah was talking about himself. He didn't know if Isaiah was talking about some other man. So he didn't know. And the reason why I went up in those scriptures, why I went backwards from seven, from verse seven, it's because Isaiah didn't even say who. He didn't give a name. He didn't say at all who he was talking about. He was just saying he, he this, he that. So the Eunice didn't know. However, God knew. And so God, by the spirit, led Philip to go up to the chariot because God obviously wanted that Eunice to know. He wanted that Eunice to know who uh, Isaiah was talking about. So Philip came along, and at verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. All right? See, Philip knew. All right? So God sent Philip to the eunuch so that Philip could show the eunuch who Isaiah was talking about. Isaiah was speaking in, prophecy, in, um, in the prophecy. All right? He was saying things that would make you think it was present at the time, but really Isaiah was prophesying of the Messiah coming and the things that he would go through. He gave details on what would happen. All right. So he was guided by the spirit to say that. However, he never did give his name. He didn't say the son of God. He didn't say Jesus. He didn't say none of that. He just said he, 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 this, he, that. All right. So yeah, the units did not understand. He didn't know. It ain't that he didn't understand what was being read. He didn't understand who the uh, prophet Isaiah was talking about. That's why he said, he says, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man. So he didn't know because Isaiah didn't say who. All right. So let's see here. And also know this, um, even with uh, like a, a new believer, if a new believer come along and start reading some some prophecy and a prophecy is not describing who, but just saying he this, he that, you're not going to know. Even you ain't going to know. It's some things that I might not know. Like, what is who is Isaiah talking about? Who are you talking about? Who is Ezekiel talking about? I won't know that unless I study. See, I got to read more and study. But what the units read was right. He was reading it and he understood what was being said. However, he didn't know who Isaiah was talking about. 
That's that's the that was the issue with that story. So when people try to come along and say, well, how come the units didn't understand? Well, I hope this opened up your eyes. I hope it opened up your eyes. Any new believer come along today and start going back in some prophecy and reading the prophets and and not knowing who the prophet is prophesying about because he's not giving his name, they not going to know. They not going to know unless they study more scripture. And see, and you know when you study scripture, you will understand. Be see and notice how you can actually study the scripture. You can read the scripture and get an understanding of who Isaiah is talking about. And you get that understanding by what? By reading. All right? Reading gives you an understanding. So everything that's written is right. You don't need some other man to come along and tell you that what's being read means something else. Well, when Jesus said he was going back to um, to the Father, that means he was going back to spirit. See, that's adding to the scripture. Jesus didn't say that. He said he was going back to his Father, and he always spoke in um, he always referenced himself as son and, and his father and God as his father. All right. The scriptures, even the apostles, in, they came along and talked the same way. They used father and son and Jesus used father and son. And neither time did any of them say that meant that Jesus was going back to spirit because he is the father. All right. So you can believe what you read. Now, understand this. Paul, an apostle, he came along after the 12, after the 11 disciples and the add on to, to make 12 disciples, um, Matthias, Paul came after that and Paul was converted in the book of Acts chapter nine. So this is after the, the um, Ethiopian eunuch and Philip had their discussion. Okay. After that conversation, um, Jesus comes on that road to Damascus, road to Damascus, and converts Paul, no, Saul. So Saul now gets converted by Jesus, the son of God, and Jesus gives him revelation. So, so Jesus give, give Paul, Saul revelation, and now Saul becomes Paul after his conversion, and let's look at what Paul said now in Ephesians chapter three, because remember Paul, now I'm saying Paul, cause he was converted from Saul. He was given a revelation. Okay. He was given revelation of all this and what he wrote, what Paul wrote. You can believe what he wrote when you read it. You don't need some man come along telling you this mean this, this mean that. Now, you may not understand who the scripture may be talking about, and God can send a man your way to explain to you who, who the man is talking about, who the prophet is talking about, who the apostle is talking about. But when you read it, it's going to mean what it say. Okay? I just proved that using the, the uh, Ethiopian eunuch and Philip. And what God did. All right. So now look at Ephesians chapter three. Let's start at verse one. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. with, So God gave Paul something to give to the Gentiles. How that verse three, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote as I wrote afore meaning I wrote before in a few words in few words okay whereby when you read whereby see what he wrote he say what I wrote in few words whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So, Paul is letting us know that, he's letting the Gentiles know that, hey, when you read what I wrote, 
you could understand what was revealed to me. And you could get that knowledge simply by reading it. So when Paul comes along and to tell us, um, and he teaches us about Jesus, the son of God, and Jesus come, and Paul come along and say Jesus is the son of God and things like that, you would know that Paul know what he's talking about. Just believe what he wrote. Just believe what he wrote. And you will understand that Jesus is the son of God. He, matter of fact, the scriptures say he went straightway in the synagogue and preached Jesus was the son of God. All right? So, let's see what else I got for you. That's it. And also note this. I'm going to end the video here. Now, now, remember, Saul became Paul, and he gave the Gentiles the revelation he was given. He preached Jesus, the Son of God. All right? He preached about Jesus, the Son of God, having a father, God the Father. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace from God the Father. And Jesus Christ, the son of the father. That's what John said in 2 John 1, 3. Now, Paul come along with this same way of talking. Paul talked the same. You know, um, in matter of fact, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. I'll just read it. He says, grace be unto you and peace from God our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul come along 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and say, now the same one that was given revelation, he come along and say, revelation, um, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, but to us there is but one God the Father, of whom are all things and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we by him. How be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. 1 Corinthians 1, 3, like I said again, he said the same thing. Grace be unto you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe Paul. And let me end it with this. 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ. So even in his Son, even in the son of one, the one that's true. This is the true God and eternal life. So what, what do Jesus mean that we, uh, that we may know him that is true. So Jesus, so the son of God came and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Who is that? That is true. Who is Jesus come that we may know? The one he says is true. John 17 is very simple and plain. You can believe what you read. Now, this is the one that Jesus wants us to know that's true. John 17, 3. And this is Jesus praying to the Father. He said, and this is life eternal. This is life eternal. This is eternal life. That they may know thee, the only true God. Oh, that's the one that's true right there. That they may know thee, the only true God. And look and look who else he say, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So when you go back to 1 John 5, and we know that, that the, on verse 20, and we know that the Son of God has come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. So whose Son are we talking about? The one that's true. So we are in him. That is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God that Jesus just said in John 17, 3, and eternal life. Jesus Christ, the son of God. He is the eternal life. So you want me to prove that's talking about Jesus being the eternal life? Well, let's look at, um, let's look at 1 John. Let me read verse 1 through 3 and I'm done. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifest. What was manifest? The life. And we have seen it and bear witness and show 
unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So who is that eternal life that was with the Father? Who is that eternal life that was with the Father? In John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Hmm. 1 John 1, 3. That which we have seen and have heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. Believe what you can read.